Hey guys, it's May May, and today I'm going to play with this. I have been waiting and waiting for these to come in. They're finally here, and I think we're going to have a good time. Now, sit back and relax, because I don't know where this is going. We're just going to test this guy out together and see what we discover. So first off, the packaging is too stinking cute. So let's get this guy out. He comes like this. So there is our tool. It says pink and mane on it. If you've not seen this, it's one of those brushes, like, uh, it's a blending brush. And a lot of you guys might have seen these, like, in the cosmetic world. And they're all over the place. Everybody's had them. But the thing I love about this one is the price point. It's only $9.99, and I want to see how it works. Love the case it lives in. All right, here's what you're going to need. We're going to need something to ink blend on. There's my little sheet. You guys ask me about this little sheet all the time. All this is is a laminated piece of cardstock, and then I just clean it off over and over again. You're also going to need a cloth, and you guys know I tell you to keep one of these on your work surface, and look how gross mine is. And we're going to play with ink. Now, I've done a couple things. The first thing I've done is I have made for myself some of these, um, let's call them mask, because that's what they would be. <laughs> And all I did was take some Brutus Monroe masking paper. I'm going to show this to you. It's already cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. I love that. You get 12 sheets in here and it is reusable for a certain period of time. And so what I did was I took two oval dies. I cut a larger one here and a smaller one here. And this actually will get you four different um, masks, okay, because you can use the inside and the outside. We're going to start with an inside. And I think I'm going to start with the smaller inside. So I'm going to move that aside. Inside, a side, there we go. And this is just a piece of four by five and a quarter cardstock. Now, I'm out of my comfort zone. I do not know much about this. I'm not big on the whole ink blending situation, all that kind of stuff. I've never been very good at that. So we're just gonna play together and see what we get, okay? All right, so I'm gonna take this little guy and I'm going to eyeball center it because I ain't got time for measuring. Um, let's see. Is that pretty close? Uh, I'm a little low. Pick this up again. Let's raise it up a little bit. If I can see what I'm doing. Oh, that's even worse. See, this is where I'm not very good at this stuff, y'all. Maybe I should measure. <laughs> Worst case scenario, I can always trim the card base out to match it. There we go. All right. So I got my mask down and I've chosen some colors. I'm going to start with some Distress Ink Oxides because, you know, they move really easy and I don't really have too much um, dry time problem with those. These will last a little while, so I'm just going to sit in where you see the colors. And from what um, they show on the Pink and Main website, which I'm going to link her video below, um, you just use this over and over again by cleaning it off on your um, towel or on your cloth. So let's start with pink. Okay, now I did watch a couple videos, by the way, to see what other people were doing with this guy. And some people were making themselves a palette on their little work surface. So they would take the ink, squish it on the palette, and then pick the ink up here. But I want to try it like Michelle did it and see if um, I'm right, see if that's the way to do it. She said, take it to the pad. So I'm going to take it to my pad, just up and down, kind of like we were doing if we were inking up a stamp. You can see that pink on there, isn't that cool? And it doesn't seem to be picking up too much. You know, these pads are pretty juicy, so it doesn't seem to be over picking up. What I love about it is this handle. It's known for this ergonomic handle, and it is comfortable in your hand. And you could even hold it like this, like you could hold the edges of it. So either way. All right, let's see what happens. So I'm going to start a little off the page to be safe. And are you kidding me? <laughs> Look at that beautiful color, y'all. That is incredible. And this is sliding across the page like velvet. Now, I'm going to tell you something. And some of the people that I watched use this, I thought they were struggling because it was kind of slipping and sliding around the page. But this is absolutely like velvet. That is amazing. I'm going to bring this up and let you see this. Look at that beautiful blend. That's gorgeous. Now, I went pretty heavy in there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cloth and do... Now, Michelle used her pink and mane cloth. I don't have that one. I just have this little guy. But she just rubbed it off. And she said she did that until she couldn't see too much color. And then she did it on a piece of white to make sure it was gone. And look, it's gone. Okay, let's go into another color. This looks super fun. Now, let me tell you something. You might be thinking, May May, this is just a demo video. But it's really not. I want to talk to you about something. I know that right now I'm hearing from you guys, okay? I, I get your messages. I see your comments. Some of you guys are not inspired right now, and I get that. It's hard to be creative when we have a lot going on, right? So one of the things that I like to do when I'm not inspired is play with backgrounds. You can make backgrounds 
all the time and for anything, right? So just sitting here and doing this will take the stress off of you, give you a place to put your thoughts, and you just make a bunch of backgrounds. And when it's time for a card, you don't have to make a background. You already have one made. Do you see that gorgeousness? Y'all, this is going to be... Now, I overdid this. Look how much I've got there. I didn't need that much. I'm going to try to be a little lighter handed. Let's see if we can pick some of this up and bring it to the page because I think I'm overdoing that. So let's bring that in. But honestly, when, you're, when your creativity is waning, you know, when the world has you heavy and your thoughts are heavy, this kind of stuff where you just sit down and make something just for the fun of it, but it's not wasted. You're not just making something... You're not just using your paper for nothing. You're making these backgrounds that you'll be able to turn around and use when you do need a card or when your inspiration does come back. Look, clean there. And I'm going to wipe this away just like so. All right, let's go a little lighter handed this time. I'm loving this, dude. <laughs> let's do some blue. And I won't be as heavy. Okay. I'm slapping it, but I'm not going to be as heavy. I say I'm not. Okay, we're going to stop. Look, there's blue. Can you see it? There it is. There's blue. All right. Let's try holding it different. Let's try holding it just by the handle. I don't know if I'm, I don't know. I think you'll figure out how you want to hold it. So let's start. Y'all, this tool is going to take a lot of your blending anxieties away. This color blending, look how good that does. Now I went lighter handed and that's fine, but I feel like it doesn't match my colors here as much. So I'm going to go back in a little bit more because I'm using pretty heavy color over here. Just look at that. That is so gorgeous. It looks like airbrush. So pretty. I want to put my foundation on with this and see if it'll airbrush my face. <laughs> All right, let's do another color. So back to, I'm going to just keep doing this and talk to you about the whole background, right? The whole background making. The thing about it is when you're in times like this where your creativity is down and you're making these backgrounds, what you want to do is make them and then sort of make yourself a little filing system where you just kind of put them away for when you need them. And then whenever you go to make a card, start there first. You've made all those backgrounds, you know, so just start there and dig out the paper that you've already created to make a card. I'm in love. This is so fun. This is so easy. Man, gorgeous. I do feel like I'm being a little heavy handed. Maybe I don't need to start as far off the page, but I'm kind of that person because I get a better blend when I do that. So I'm going to clean. I cannot believe how like I'm going to do this. I know y'all hate when I put stuff on my skin, but look, it's not coming off on me. Maybe a tiny bit. There might be a hue of green. Maybe. Is there? Let me see. I don't know. If it is, it's not terrible, right? So we're not wasting a whole lot of ink. This little part right here, but a lot of you tell me, you know, you can, and this is true, you can wet that. And if you're playing with backgrounds, just wet that and use it on another background. Wouldn't that be cool? All right, so let's go over here to purple. Dusty Concord, let me say it right. All right, purple. There's some, let's see what we get. I kind of like holding it like that. I don't think I went as heavy that time. Let's see if I can pick all that up and bring it onto the page. I mean to tell you, this is fun. I love this. Now, if you were so inclined, this becomes a background too, because if you don't want to reuse it as a mask, stick that on a card and use it for something, right? A sentiment spot or something like that. Let's peel that dude off and see what we get behind it. I've never been good at this. This did it for me, though. I mean, honestly, this did all the work for me. So let's peel it away. Oh, my. Look how crisp those edges are. Oh, I love this so much. I love, love, love this. Look how sharp and crisp and beautiful that is. What a perfect spot for a sentiment. Now, see? Even if your creativity was low, if you sat down and did something like this, now I can image, I can totally imagine in my head. Matter of fact, we'll do it at the end. I see this card already. We'll do that one. Okay. Or I may come back and do, you know what I'll do? I'll do this video making the backgrounds. And then I'll do a video where I show you how they inspire me to make a card. I totally see what this one should be. So this one's good. Love it. All right. Let's play with another one. Now, here's the difference this time. Instead of using my oxide inks, when Michelle did her video on Pink and Main, she used my favorite inks, which are Versaclairs. 
And I have always been afraid that Versicla, that pigments would be too heavy for these kind of things. So we're going to find out together. Okay, let me get everything cleaned up. I don't remember if I wiped the purple off. So let's wipe this dude off. I've always been afraid of using a pigment because I felt like a pigment was too moist and would stick around too long. But the truth of the matter is an oxide is too. Okay, so where did my little... Let's do the opposite this time. So let's take this guy and let's... Can I do the opposite? The problem is I didn't cut these. Um, let me cut a different piece. So I cut myself a piece that's four and a quarter by five and a half. So it'll be the same size as this. So placing this will be easier. All right, so let's peel off our backer. By the way, if you save these, you can put this guy back on here and use it over and over again until it's just too used. And you'll know when the too used is. But again, if we can turn them also into backgrounds on the cards, that'd be cool too. All right, so carefully, I'm going to line this up at the bottom. And then I'm going to do my darndest <laughs> to let it do its thing. How about that? Not the worst. Not the worst. I got a couple bubbles, but those rubbed out. All right, let's make sure the center is nice and flat. And now we're going to do the middle with some, um, with some blending, ink blending. So rub that out. All right, I'm going to start with this green. I feel like we're going from, I'm going to rub that down. I don't see anything picking up, right? All right, let's go into right into our pigment. There we go. All right, let's see what it does. Now this is pigment ink, it's different. And let's just see, look at that. I was really afraid it would be too juicy, but it's not too juicy. It works really well. I'm actually gonna add some more. That is really cool. So there's that color. I'm gonna turn it and do another color. Same deal, let's clean in between. I just threw everything off my desk, y'all. That's what I do. When I start playing and I get excited, I just get too ahead of myself and just start throwing things around. All right, now I will show you this. Oh, I should have done this in the camera. Watch this. The pigment, oh, you can't see it now. You could see the pigment coming off. You might can see it on camera, but the pigment ink I can see coming off of the little um, brush. I couldn't see that with my oxides. All right, let's try again. Let's do this beautiful blue color. Oh, if I can pick it up. There we go. Then I'm not picking up as much. I'm barely tapping these, but the thing is, you know, I have that fear of pigment at this point. All right, let's come in this way. The thing this is doing different than my traditional blending sponge is I'm not getting this little streaky bits. You know, the little line or streaky or when I sit this down, I don't seem to be getting that circular shape that sometimes I can get. Oddly enough, the pigments seem to be a little more subdued. Isn't that funny? Like the oxides were much more vibrant and these are more subdued, which is not what I thought would happen. I really thought my pigments would be more vibrant. All right, this is where we're going to see something. This is yellow and I just used the blue. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to clean this off so you can see it. You can see that blue coming off. Oh, maybe you can. I can see it. Rub it around on here. And look, these guys seem to be holding it really good because uh, they're kind of, they're not flaying out or anything. You know what I'm saying? They seem to be holding it real well. All right, let's do the yellow. And I want to see if the color mixes. It could. Pigment can move pigment. Pigment. Let's see what happens. Honestly, it doesn't look bad at all. I see the yellow and then it goes into the blue. There is some green mix right there, but not much. But I may have done too many close to yellow. Let's go ahead and add this last color. And it's orange. I think that'll be a pretty color to add. Might should have added a pink too. Hmm. We may come back and add a pink. So let's do orange. Oops. Hmm, that one's not picking up as much. Maybe I'm not being as, maybe I'm not staying as long. Let's see. Maybe I need to rub it a little bit. I don't feel like I'm getting as much orange out of that. Isn't that interesting? Let's see what happens if we kind of rub. Very pale. Maybe it's that color, but there is a little bit of orange on the edge, but not a whole lot. Let's peel this mask back and see what we got. I'm not going to add another color because we're just playing. All right, so let's peel our mask back. 
I don't want to ruin it. Let's get this guy. Okay, so I'm lifting up from inside here just a little bit to try to help me peel this away. I'll get it started in a second. There it goes. Okay, so I may have a little bit on the edges where I didn't line up perfect, but that's not a big deal. We can trim that away. I love how crisp that circle is. I'm trying to keep a lot of this in my hand so it doesn't get ruined. I want to either use it again or use it as a background. Keep coming. Let's see. Wow, isn't that pretty? I love this tool. All right, there is one more thing I want to do, and uh, you know I had to do it, so just hang on. We'll do that one, too. So for my next trick, <laughs> like I'm a magician, I'm going to try these Distress Oxides on a piece of embossed paper. I want to see what happens. I want to see if it, um, it like enhances the embossing or if it hides it because if it might, I don't know. We're going to see what happens. Also, I want to mention this. Um, cleaning this guy, you can use mild soap and water to clean this. So you can see how I'm starting to get some of the color build up here. Actually, that green is really um, pretty prominent there. And so when I get through playing, I might want to go clean it with some soap and water and let it dry. I, I would probably treat it like my cosmetic brushes because it feels like that. So that's probably what I'll do. All right, let's try this dried marigold. This color is so pretty in and of itself. And I'm going to be a little heavy because I want to really get some on here. Let's see if I did. Mm, let's get some more. Let's keep going. That ought to do it. Let's try to smear that around. I don't know. I want more. I want more of it. There we go. All right, let's see what happens. Really light hand. I'm going to really hold it very gently and just see what we get when we start to rub around. Because I really want, you know how much I love to ink drag over embossing. I want to see what this does. That's kind of pretty, isn't it? That's kind of bringing out that color nicely. Let's try, or bringing out that pattern. I do think it's kind of dropping down in in places, especially where my page is warped. Can you see that my page kind of, well, you really can't see it. It kind of warped in my machine, so I've got kind of a little dip there, but I kind of like that. But you could always turn your brush to the side and get in there. Um, I do think that's making the flowers very, uh, very prominent. It's, it's so much prettier in person than on camera because I'm looking on camera and it doesn't look the same. All right, so let's clean this up. I know this is killing so many of you guys that I keep wiping this ink off and not using it for something else, but we're just playing today. Any other time I might wet it and smush something down, you know, do some smushing, but today we're just playing. So, all right, let's try this guy, the blue. Oh, I can really see this one. Look, can you see it? I really see that one. So let's go really, really light-handed. Not going to press. I'm just going to, I'm really letting the weight of the tool kind of do its thing and just move it from side to side. My goodness, y'all. I really like this. I should have done this a long time ago. Let's go up here. Again, letting the weight do the work. You can tell, too, that I pressed a little more on the top because there's more color underneath. Then you see how that's just laying on the top? Let me get my finger in there so it'll focus. See how it's just laying on the top? That's beautiful, isn't it? Let's do that again. Not pressing. Just letting it grab. All right, I got in a little bit. I went in a little bit in there, but that's okay. Let's add some more color. This guy's pretty fun. Pretty fun. Some of you are like, we've been doing this forever. You're just behind the curve. I told y'all that in my Q&A video. If there's one thing I am, it's behind the trend. <laughs> I'm always behind the trend. But when I pick up on a trend, I really do. I really love it. So um, if I get a good one anyway. All right, so let's try this one. A little pink. Ooh, that one is pale, pale, pale. So let's really load this guy up. Oh yeah, I can even see that. So let's get some pink in there. Y'all, these colors are beautiful for spring and doing this for spring is a really cool technique. But I bet for Christmas, we're really gonna love this guy. And y'all know Christmas in July, it's actually not that far away if you think about it. At least not for me, I'm already thinking about it. So, all right, so there's that side done. Look how beautiful. I actually like the idea of only doing that side and like leaving this side white. Isn't that pretty? I wanna come back in and do a little more pink where these guys come together. And I wanna see what happens if I kinda of come up here. You know, with the oxides, it should blend that's really kind of cool, too. I'm going to leave that like that. That may drive some people insane, but instead of doing this part, I'm going to leave it 
and use that for a card background only halfway done. That's gorgeous, right? Let's do another one. I got one more. All right, I'm not 100% on this color combination, but we're going to see what happens. I wanted to try to do something that wasn't like my norm, so that's what we're doing there. This embossed panel says thank you on it. Isn't that pretty? I love this. Um, and I just embossed this stuff ahead of time. So, all right, I'm going to clean this guy one more time just on my cloth. I have not washed it yet. I am going to wash it because I want to see how it holds up when we wash it, but I'll show you that in the next video. But um, I just love this guy. He's fun. All right, let's start with... I want to start with that orange. I think I'm going to start with the orange. Okay, instead of coming off the page this time, I'm going to play a little bit. Now, I don't know how well this is going to do. I don't know if I should go this way or if I should go this way. Let's just see. So, what I'm trying to do here is just see how well this does with um, dye ink also. So, I'm using these colors that I have in dye ink. I don't know how easy. I'm going to do this a different way. I think I'd do better to do this. Oh, yeah. Even I can see that on there better. So I'm just going to rub it like that. And then let's come in here to the center this time and see what we get. Just starting in the center. You guys, how does it... Here's what I was afraid of. I was afraid that it's so big that it would just splotch, but it doesn't. It's really kind of cool. So I'm just wanting to get kind of the thank you word in this orange. That's really pretty amazing to me. And I do like the way the dewdrops are working and the dye ink seems to be working just as fine, just as well. I think I'll go to the yellow, the cantaloupe now. Let me wipe this guy off on my cloth. And then we'll take the cantaloupe. And I do like doing it like this. This is probably so wrong. If Michelle is watching, she's gonna be like, oh, that's not how you do it, Mame. but that's okay. I like, I think it's working. Here I'm going to try to tip it and only use a side. And let's just see if we can blend some color in that. I don't need to though. It's doing okay. I don't know. I don't see much yellow. Let's try to get some more of that. There's probably no rules. There it comes. A little bit. Not very much, but we'll go with that. All right, let's do, how about some lime green? Man, I enjoy playing with new tools. <laughs> I especially enjoy loving them. I like it when a plan, like a plan comes together. See how that does. I may be working this into my bristles too much, but we'll see. All right, let's go to the edge. Okay, the dew drops or the memento is very pale so far. But look how cool that's starting to look. Can you see that green? I'm going to do some more. I'm going to get heavier handed. Oh, let's do this. Why did I not think of this? I even told y'all this earlier. Let's do it this way. There we go. Let's pick it up that way. That green is just pale. Very pretty though. That's cool. Let's do, I'm not even gonna clean it because I'm going to another green. Let's do this teal. Oh, this is where things could go very south, y'all. This could go bad. Picking it up. It's a lot. Look, this is going to be a lot. Okay, let's come in from the side. Wow, that is so pretty. And this is the kind of thing that you give and somebody's like, how did they do that? How did they get that blend like that? That is so pretty. Let's bring some down here as well. I cannot believe how it makes you look like a blending superstar, just like done, done. Let's get some more. And wouldn't you think this would go on so much darker? It's like really easily controlled. That's gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna try something else. So let's clean this off. All right, and let's go get some gray. This is London Fog. There we go. Let's pick that up. And I want to try something. I want to try to see if I can just kind of treat this like ink dragging and see what it'll do with that thank you word. Nope. It's made for blending. It, it is going to blend. It is not going to be splotchy. It's not going to leave you big 
clumps of anything. It is made to blend. And you see how much ink I'm picking up there, and it is going to blend it. If you struggle with blending, this is going to be your favorite tool because it is just going to blend. It is, it's not interrupting the other colors. It's just going to blend it in. That is really neat. Never fear, though. We can always ink drag over it. Let's see what happens when we do that, right? Okay, so I use that. Now let's just try this way. Okay, I'm going to put this guy back in here. This is its little holder so you don't lose it. Let's just ink drag over this. This is where it could go south, y'all. Pretty. It did not go south. That looks okay. Does not look bad. So an ink blended background and then a drag on top of it. And you know what that really does? That makes those uh, the thank you really pop because look at the light color behind it. Isn't that pretty? Let's really cover that. Can you tell? It's so hard to tell on camera, but see how that color's popping behind it? That's beautiful. I really like that. That's cool. So we mixed two things that we like to do together. All right, so let's bring our backgrounds back over and let's look at all of them that we did today. So our very first one, love this. Love, love, love this. This is the Distress Oxide. It, this little guy and that Distress Oxide is a dream together. That's perfect together. There's the second one we did. We did this one with the Versa Clairs. We did this with the, um, with the pigment ink. And I think it's okay, but I have to be honest. I don't, the pigment ink is not nearly as vibrant as the oxides. That's incredible. And then this one we did with oxides, but we did the paler oxides, but still a lot of color lay down on there. I really like that. And then lastly, we did it with the mementos, with the uh, dew drops. I like this. I, I should have, in hindsight, done these two colors by putting them on the mat and then picking them up because I feel like I got a better... Uh, result in the middle. Although in person, I can see pink and orange or yellow just fine, but on camera, I don't see it very well. So there you go, playing with backgrounds. Now, I want to know in the comments, what's the thing you do when like your creativity is locked, you can't really pull it out? What's the thing you do to kind of just get in your room and craft? This is what I like to do. Just put these aside for later. Like if I need a card, I have a perfect background done and I got to play in my craft room with my supplies and it's what I like to do. So there you go. If you want to pick up one of these guys, we have a few of these in store. I'm going to be ordering more. I wanted to test it. I really like it. I think it's worth it. I'm going to have this as a staple on my desk. I will wash it, um, and I'll show you the next time I use it what it looks like before we wash it. But, I mean, soap and water is going to clean ink out. It'll be fine like that. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.